And he's going to land in a couple hours, he's going to rent a car, and he's going to come to Long Beach. And he's going to attend one of these fabulous TED dinners tonight. And he doesn't know that he's infected with a paralytic disease, and we don't either. Because that's the way the world works. That's the planet we live on. Don't pretend it isn't. Now, we love to wrap ourselves in lies. We love to do it. Everyone take their vitamins this morning? Echinacea, a little echinacea, a little antioxidant to get you going? I know you did, because half of Americans do every day. They take this stuff, and they take alternative medicines, and it doesn't matter how often we find out that they're useless. The data says it all the time. They darken your urine. They almost never do more than that. <laughs> it's okay. You want to pay $28 billion for dark urine? I'm totally with you. <laughs> dark urine. Dark. <laughs> Why do we do that? Why do we do that? Well, I think I understand. We hate big pharma. We hate big government. We don't trust the man. And we shouldn't. Our healthcare system sucks. It's cruel to millions of people. It's absolutely astonishingly cold and soul-deadening to those of us who can even afford it. So we run away from it, and where do we run? We leap into the arms of big placebo. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love big placebo. Yeah. But, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's really a serious thing because this stuff is crap. And we spend billions of dollars on it. And I have all sorts of little props here. None of it. Ginkgo, fraud. Echinacea, fraud. Akai, I don't even know what that is, but we're spending billions of dollars on it. It's fraud. And you know what? When I say this stuff, people scream at me and they say, what do you care? Let people do what they want to do. It's, it's, it makes them feel good. And you know what? You're wrong. Because I don't care if it's the secretary of HHS who's saying, Hmm, I'm not going to take the evidence of my experts on mammograms or some cancer quack who wants to treat his patient with coffee enemas. When you start down the road where belief in magic replace evidence in science, you end up in a place you don't want to be. You end up in Tabo and Becky, South Africa. He killed 400,000 of his people by insisting that beetroot, garlic, and lemon oil were much more effective than the antiretroviral drugs we know can slow the course of AIDS. Hundreds of thousands of needless deaths in a country that has been plagued worse than any other by this disease. Please, don't tell me there are no consequences to these things. There are. There always are. Now, the most mindless epidemic we're in the middle of right now is this absurd battle between proponents of genetically engineered food and the organic elite. It's an idiotic debate. It has to stop. It's a debate about words, about metaphors. It's ideology. It's not science. Every single thing we eat, every grain of rice, every sprig of parsley, every Brussels sprout has been modified by man. You know, there weren't tangerines in the Garden of Eden. There wasn't any cantaloupe. There weren't Christmas trees. We made it all. We made it over the last 11,000 years. And some of it worked and some of it didn't. We got rid of the stuff that didn't. Now we can do it in a more precise way. And there are risks. Absolutely. But we can put something like vitamin A into rice. And that stuff can help millions of people, millions of people, prolong their lives. You don't want to do that? I, I, I have to say, I don't understand it. Um, we object to genetically engineered food. Why do we do that? Well, the things I constantly hear are too many chemicals, pesticides, hormones, monoculture. We don't want giant fields of the same thing. It's wrong. We don't want companies patenting life. We don't want companies owning seeds. And you know what my response to all of that is? Yes, you're right. Let's fix it. It's true. We've got a huge food problem, but this isn't science. This has nothing to do with science. It's law. It's morality. It's patent stuff. You know, science isn't a company. It's not a country. It's not even an idea. It's a process. It's a process. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. But the idea that we should not allow science to do its job because we're afraid is really very deadening, and it's preventing millions of people from prospering. You know, in the next 50 years, we're going to have to grow 70% more food than we do right now. 70%. This is investment in Africa over the last 30 years. Disgraceful. Disgraceful. They need it, and we're not giving it to them. And why? Genetically engineered food. We don't want to encourage people to eat that rotten stuff. Like cassava, for instance. Cassava is something that half a billion people eat. It's kind of like a potato. It's just a bunch of calories. 
It sucks. It doesn't have nutrients, it doesn't have protein, and scientists are engineering all of that into it right now. And then people would be able to eat it and they'd be able to not go blind. They wouldn't starve. And you know what? That would be nice. It wouldn't be Chez Panisse, but it would be nice. <laughs> and all I can say about this is, why are we fighting it? Why? I mean, let's ask ourselves, why are we fighting it? Because we don't want to move genes around. This is about moving genes around. It's not about chemicals. It's not about our ridiculous passion for hormones, our insistence on having bigger food, better food, singular food. This isn't about Rice Krispies. This is about keeping people alive. And it's about time we started to understand what that meant. Because you know something? If we don't, if we continue to act the way we're acting, we're guilty of something that I don't think we want to be guilty of, high-tech colonialism. There's no other way to describe what's going on here. It's selfish, it's ugly, it's beneath us, and we really have to stop it. So after this amazingly fun conversation, <laughs> you might want to say, so you still want to get in this ridiculous time machine and go forward? And absolutely, absolutely, I do. It's stuck in the present right now, but we have an amazing opportunity. We can set that time machine on anything we want. We can move it where we want to move it. And we're going to move it where we want to move it. We have to have these conversations and we have to think. But when we get in the time machine and we go ahead, we're going to be happy we do. I know that we can, and as far as I'm concerned, that's something the world needs right now. Thank you. Thank you. In 25 years, global energy consumption will increase by 50%. To meet demand, we'll need to harness the power of sun, wind, waves, atoms. They're all on the table, but today, we need oil. I'm the drilling manager with Repsol Gulf of Mexico. We're out here in uh, 4,000 feet of water in Green Canyon 304 drilling the Angostura Prospect, about a 29,000 foot subsalt well. Big technical challenge, that's why we got a big rig like the Cajun Express on it. One of the challenges that the oil industry has is finding new oil because all of the easy oil has been used up. Finding oil is, is becoming more difficult and difficult because it's always deeper and deeper and deeper. More and more the industry requires deep computing to find that deep oil. We have tools down hole that evaluate the rock while we're drilling it. This data is being sent up just about instantaneously while we're drilling five miles down below the surface. The Barcelona Supercomputing Center is a valuable resource for Repsol because it allows them to crunch those numbers and generate those images that allows them to find the oil. I am in the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, and we are here working to generate the new generation of seismic imaging tools. Because the quality of the data on a prospect that we're drilling today, we're able to reveal deposits that we had never been able to see before. To find this oil, we need to use uh, machines of this size with more than 10,000 processors to process the data that to generate the images of the Gulf of Mexico. What we've done with Repsol is to develop a system that is now the fastest seismic imaging system in the world. Is there any oil in this picture? In this picture, there is oil right down here. Through using supercomputers, we'll be able to reduce the time to finding new oil, reduce the cost of finding that oil, and make existing and new reservoirs more efficient in producing oil. These are reserves that we may not have recovered in the past. We have to move to more sustainable fuels in the future. It takes time. And in the meantime, we need to find the oil that we can to supply the Earth's needs. <laughs>